I speak to you in the name of one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Most of you know I went to Louisiana Tech University in Ruston, Louisiana. While I was there, I met one of the finest quarterbacks to ever come out of that great university. By his junior year, Paul Harvey had him tapped to go to the Washington Redskins. The Pittsburgh Steelers wanted him. He had a rocket of an arm. In just two years of starting at quarterback, he threw for 2,237 yards and attempted 411 passes. He made 12 touchdowns. His pro career was assured. Scouts from all over pro football came to watch him and his games. But that first year, he almost quit because he had a call, a different call. By the end of his second year of starting at quarterback, the best football player to ever come from Vivian, Louisiana, metaphorically placed his jersey on the desk of his coach, and he walked away to go hunting in the woods. He said, football is interfering with my hunting. Now he looks like the fourth member of ZZ Top. His name is Phil Robertson. He created a duck call. Phil Robertson created Duck Dynasty, the reality TV show. And the backup quarterback that probably would not have started that next year if Phil hadn't decided to create a duck call and go hunting? Terry Bradshaw may never have thrown a pass that next year. But you know, Phil's real call is not a duck call. It is not buck commander. Now you can say what you want to about his personal beliefs. But the truth is, he's a generous man. And he says he wants to give out of his abundance, and he has. Because his real calling is to be a philanthropist. And most people do not know he gives money generously, generously, to things you and I will never know. Samuel hears a calling. Now, at first, he's confused. Wakes up in the middle of the night, thinks Eli is calling him. So he wakes Eli up. Are you calling me? Eli thinks he's having a bad dream. Go back to bed. He hears it again. Samuel, Samuel. He bolts out of bed. What do you want, Eli? Eli says, go back to bed. I'm not calling you. The third time, he goes to Eli, and Eli says, I know what's going on. I want you, the next time you hear it, to reply, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And God spoke to Samuel, clearly a call, a call that we still hear. 2,600 years later. And we ask, what is a call? Mama used to say when I did something imprudent growing up, and trust me, I did a lot of that. That was uncalled for. As though to do something right was to be called for. Now Mama's right. All of us here have a calling to do the right thing. And just like your fingerprints are unique one from another, so is your call from God different from one another. Too often we think only priests are called. Not true. God calls priests, teachers, musicians, bankers, lawyers, physicians, car dealers, housewives, house husbands, hunters, football players. God calls everyone. And he asked them to pay heed. Take Mamado Gassama, for example. Mamado had a hard life. He really wanted a better life. And so he left Mali. He sought a better life in a new country. Shortly after arriving, God called him. Mamado, climb. 
said the voice in his heart. Those years of struggling to make a living, those years of hard working, had given him an unbelievable upper body strength. All those years of not having enough food on the table gave him a perfect body weight. He's walking down the street, Mamadou says, what's going on? And he walks into a crowd. They're doing nothing. They're looking up. They are frozen. And God says, Mamadou, climb. There is a four-year-old boy dangling from a balcony about to fall to his death. God says, Mamadou, climb. And climb he did. Unlike many of us here, he didn't question that inner voice. Unlike Episcopalians, he didn't form a committee to see if he should do it. He climbed, hand over hand, story after story, balcony after balcony, and he rescued that little boy. Later he said, I just didn't have time to think. I ran across the road to go and save him. I just climbed. And thank God, God helped me. The more I climbed, the more I had courage to climb up higher. He rescued that four-year-old boy. If you haven't seen that video, Google it when you leave church today. Climb. Climb. The more we climb, the higher we go. And each of us here has a call. That great German theologian, Diedrich Bonhoeffer, once said, the cross is laid on every Christian. The first Christ suffering which every man must experience is the call to abandon the attachments of this world. He is saying, your call, my call, are apart from the world. A call, a call. Hear it the third time, a call. Is it a coincidence Samuel took three times before he figured it out? Think about it. How many times has God called me or you to do something multiple times before we did it? And, and, and why is that? When God calls us, why don't we say yes in faith and realize that faith, like Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. So when you are called, when I am called, in faith, we need to take that step, but we don't. What are we afraid of? Our idea won't work? That we don't have enough money? People will not understand us? The goal is four stories tall? That shouldn't stop us. After all, we are called in our baptism, called to seek justice, called to serve the poor, called to respect the dignity of every human being. We are called here it a second time, we are called, hear it the third time, we are called. In our baptism, to be children of God. This day, don't just sit there in your pew. Don't ignore the call in that deep, secret place in your heart that's been gnawing at you for some time. In faith. Rise up, climb up, and say, I am here, Lord, and I am listening to your call. Amen.